Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel and I'm Muriel Benaksa, a food photographer, recipe developer and soon-to-be cookbook author. I know this one is a new one but it's one of the main reasons why I haven't been posting that much in the past year or so on YouTube. Over the past three years now I have been working on my very first cookbook and it's a project that took a lot of my creative energy. I had to create all the recipes, shoot all the photos, edit all the photos, work on the manuscript and it was incredibly fulfilling but very very demanding and so I had very little energy to come on YouTube here and share more photography tutorials. However, I am back and I'm excited to be jumping back in and sharing with you editing tutorials, behind the scenes videos, as well as videos about my gear and my day-to-day -day life as a creative entrepreneur. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that my go-to style is moody. I love to play with dark and light shadows and highlights and really bring out a sense of comfort in the images that I create. And this also extends to the type of colors that I like to shoot and style with. I love to create scenes that have a lot of brown and beige and orange and yellow to create, again, the sense of warmth and comfort, inviting the viewer of my images into the scene that I created. So today we will be editing together three photos that have a lot of brown tones in them and we will be doing that using my very first free preset. It's called Brown Food Magic and you can download it in the description to use in your own editing process. I have used this preset for over five years now, from client work to personal work. I even used it while I was editing some of the photos in my cookbook. I really love this preset because I find that it is very good at bringing warmth and contrast to my images while highlighting the texture of the food that I've shot. Of course, like any preset, Brown Food Magic is not a one-click miracle tool. When you apply it to any one of your images, you will have to play around a little bit with adjusting the settings in order to really transform the image that you're working with to what you had in your mind. What I mean by that is you most likely have to increase the exposure or maybe decrease it a little bit, play around with the shadows, play around with the blacks, and add some texture if you want to. And of course, if you know me, uh, you might want to play around with the various masks that are available in Lightroom uh, in order to bring attention to your main subject. Through the editing of the images that I chose for today, I will, of course, as always, walk you through why I apply certain edits on each of the images in order to get to a final image that is close to my aesthetic. Hopefully these tips and explanations will help you understand a little bit better my editing process and therefore make your editing process a lot easier in the future. So let's jump right in and start with our very first photo. This coconut cake image is a photo that I took for a recipe on my blog. The recipe is called Coconut Lover's Cake. It's a cake that my father-in-law absolutely adores and it's a recipe that is actually perfect for the summer because it's nice and light. If you'd like to attend this recipe, the link is in the description. Enough talking about the recipe itself, let's talk about this image. It is the perfect candidate for the brown food magic preset because of the fact that it has a lot of yellow tones, a lot of browns and beige that are going to be coming to life with my preset. So let's apply it and see how we can edit this image to make it even more beautiful. So here we are in Lightroom. Let's apply the brown food magic preset. One click. Okay, already from the get-go, we can tell that the image is just quite a bit too dark. So in order to remedy that, let's increase the exposure to a point that we like. I think this is about right for me. For now, I already like the nice contrast. I like the fact that the blacks are quite present. However, I would say that I would want this image to have a little bit more pop. And I'm going to do that by actually increasing the whites a little bit here. So let's do that. Ooh, I love that. See how the coconut whipped cream is actually coming to life as I'm increasing the whites. I think the texture level is quite nice as I'm zooming into it. I like how it's applied. I think I want to reduce the shadows a little bit, just a touch, just a little smidge. Yeah, like this. And I'm not going to touch the vibrance, the saturation. I like where things are at right now. The tone curve, I don't think we need to touch the tone curve for this image. I wouldn't really want to emphasize more shadows or bring out the highlights or the whites. I think it's pretty good already. Uh, let's see. 
I think I would like the yellows to pop a little bit more. So let's play with the hue saturation luminance panel. In the luminance, I'm going to increase the luminance of the yellows just a little bit. Again, this is really adding some nice light to the coconut whipped cream as well as the shredded coconut that is on top. I think I also would like to emphasize the color in this image, so make the yellows a touch more saturated. So let's do that. Yeah, I like this. And I think I also want the oranges to be a little bit more saturated so that my arm pops out a little bit more. There you go. I like this already. I really like this. In terms of the details, I like my images more on the sharper side, so the sharpness is quite high here. I'm gonna leave it at that. I think I'm gonna add a little effect, a little vignette effect, although we're going to emphasize the vignetting very soon with a mask. I'm gonna add it just like this. I like that. So this is the before and after. I already really like what we've done. I think what is popping out to me right now is the fact that here in the foreground, it's a little bit too bright. I don't like this patch of brown <laughs> that is uh, popping out right here. So let's remedy that and add a little mask. I'm gonna use my brush for this and I'm going to decrease the highlights and then paint over this part here. I'm doing this because I really want the focus to be on the coconut cake as opposed to have the eye kind of move around a little bit too much um, to the bottom part of the image, especially because there's not much going on there. It's really just a napkin and the backdrop. I might even decrease the exposure just, just, a, just a little bit. That's a bit too much. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. And then another thing that I wanna do is I want the cake to pop out a little bit more. So I'm going to decrease the shadows, but only on the cake and the cake stand. So again, I'm gonna select a brush, increase or reduce the shadows technically, and then paint right on the cake. And just a touch on the stand, but I really want the cake, especially the shadow part on the right, to be a little bit brighter and come out more. I like that. I like that a lot. Let's put that into full screen. Yeah, I think it's beautiful. I don't really think there's anything that would need more tweaking. I like this as it is right now. And this is the before and this is the after. As you can tell, we really brought to life the beige, the yellow, the brown that is in this image and made it pop. And I find this whole scene seems very inviting and luxurious in a sense. I think because of the warmth that comes from the colors and the styling and the editing, of course. I think uh, that's pretty much it for this image. We didn't do too many edits, but I think the preset already does a lot of the work for us. We just had to, as I said before, do a little tweaks to this image in order to bring it to life. The second image that we'll be editing is this date salted caramel. This is also a recipe that lives on my site. Again, the link is in the description. This, I have to say, is probably one of my favorite photos I've ever taken. I just love it so, so much. I love the movement in this image, the fluidity. I love the specular highlights. I love the shadows and it feels very luxurious and just I don't know, there's something about this image I love so much and it's it's one of the images I'm most proud of and it didn't take that long to shoot, probably maybe 15 minutes, but it's everything I love about macro photography in this photo. All right, let's put the brown food magic preset. Okay, we already see there's a lot of contrast that was created. We can tell that. However, again, like the previous image, this image is a little bit too dark. So let's increase the exposure. Okay, yes. I think it's a lot, it's a big increase, but I think I like this. One thing that's already, I'm looking at this image and it's bugging me a little bit is just the fact that you can tell that there's a plate right here in the left corner. So let's remedy that and then move forward with the other edits. I'm just gonna crop it a little bit. This is good, I like this. All right, so in terms of the shadows and the highlights, maybe I wanna bring down the blacks a touch. 
just to create a little bit more of that contrast. But I don't think I'm gonna play around with this too much. I think what I wanna do with this image the most is bring out the orange color. So let's go to the hue saturation luminance panel and under saturation, increase the saturation of the orange. Like this. And I think I wanna increase the luminance as well. Like that. And I feel like there's a little bit of a yellow undertone to the caramel, so I want to change the hue a little bit, bring it more to the red side, like this. I like that. I really like that. So the shadows in the top part of the image are a little bit too strong for me, so I'm gonna bring in a linear gradient in order to resolve this. This. Yes, this is better. I like this a lot. So let's look at the before and after. This is before and this is after. I find that this preset really brought out the nice texture of the caramel. It brought out also the beautiful shadows that really create a lot of movement in this shot. Yeah, really brought this image to life. Oh, I, I just love this photo. It's one of those that I'm really proud of. I'm sure you also have images that are really proud of. Let me know in the comments below what are some of the images you are the most proud of that you shot. I think it's so important for us to celebrate ourselves when we create images that we're really proud of. And this image is one of those images and I'm so happy that the Brown Food Magic preset works so well on this photo. The final image that we will be editing is this cocktail shot. Fun fact, <laughs> this is actually not a recipe and not really a cocktail either. In order to create this image, I just uh, steeped some tea and let it cool and then put it in a glass that had a nice little sugar rim on it and then dropped a little ice cube in there in order to create this cocktail shot. Sometimes you don't need to have these fancy recipes in order to practice your food photography, or in this case, your drink photography. All you need is a little bit of creativity and just the desire to want to shoot. So this is an image that's a little bit different from the previous images. Maybe from the first look, this image might not look like an image that would work really well with the Brown Food Magic preset. It actually does work great. The reason being is that as you can tell, this image already has some nice shadows, little highlights here and there, but also it has nice tones of brown and beige and orange, a little bit of yellow that I think the Brown Food Magic preset can really enhance. So let's apply it. Here we go. As always, my pictures are a little bit underexposed. You know, what's new there? But we can remedy that very quickly by just increasing the exposure on the image and wow. Isn't it cool? I, I like this image a lot too. <laughs> yeah, I really, I, I find that it really comes to life the moment you increase the exposure. And with the Brown Food Magic preset, you can tell that the yellows and the oranges were really brought to life, which I love. I especially like the texture in the rim of the glass here. I think that looks really, really good. I think the image for my personal aesthetic is a little bit too cold. So what I'm gonna do is actually play around with the temperature of the shot and see if I can get a bit closer to what I have in mind. Not too much. Uh, I like this. I like this a lot. I think this works really, really well. I think in this shot, I wanna increase the texture a little bit more than the other images because I really want that rim to come out. Yeah. I love that. And then in terms of the coloring, let's see if we can maybe add a touch of saturation to the yellow more specifically. I don't think I need to have the, the slices of orange become a bit more bright because I think they're already quite saturated here, but I'd like the drink to be a little bit more saturated. Just a little bit. And then I actually, I, I want to decrease the saturation of the oranges. I find they're a bit too distracting. I think this is good then actually decrease the saturation of the yellow. As you can tell, when I edit, sometimes I do something and I'm like, huh, actually, no, this doesn't work as well for me. So I just go back. Feel free to always do that whenever you're editing. It's important sometimes to like even step away from your images and come back to them and see if you see something that maybe before you hadn't seen because you were just looking at the same image for a long period of time. Let's now increase the luminance of the yellow here. 
because I really, I love the shine here at the bottom of uh, the glass. I think that really pops out nicely when we increase the luminance. And I think the last thing that I want to do is that I want to bring down the highlights a little bit in the top part of the image, just to create a more kind of cohesive look between the, the foreground that is a little bit darker and the background. Yeah, I like that. There you go. Okay, so this is the before. This is the after. You can really tell, yes, it's definitely coming to life. I love how this preset brought out the warm tones and emphasized a little bit of the texture that is already present of the image. Um, and I find this is a really great example where the image technically is not all that moody. It's a little bit more on the brighter side, but still the Brown Food Magic preset works really, really well. So I'm super happy that we got this final image in the end. So as you can tell, this preset works really well for a variety of images from very dark and moodier images to images that are a little bit more on the bright side. It also works well with images that showcase a bigger scene, like in the case of this coconut cake, but also Brown Food Magic works well for close-ups. So anything that is a, a macro where you want to really emphasize the texture of an ingredient or even a dish. Well, that's it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed seeing a little bit of my behind the scenes of how I edit an image using an existing preset. I hope that you also go ahead and try out my Brown Food Magic preset and use it on your own images and see how it enhances your photos and brings them to life. Also, while you're on my site and downloading Brown Food Magic, don't hesitate to browse around and look at my different offerings. I just recently released an ebook called Nailing Napkins. This ebook features eight techniques on how you can style a napkin so that you don't have to get frustrated the next time you're in a shoot trying to style a napkin and it's not working out at all. I've been there. I've felt that frustration and it's very, very real. On that note, thank you so much for watching, for your patience in me taking so much time to create a new video and for making it to the end of this very video today. I wish you a beautiful rest of your day and I will see you very soon. I can't wait to see you today. I just love it when you call